Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Tron, the 1982 classic that creates a milestone in computer animation. It stars Jeff Bridges, Bruce Fox Lentner, Cindy Morgan, and David Warner. And it's written and directed by Steven Litzberger. The movie begins when a former employee of a software corporation known as Encom, named Kevin Flynn, who also owns an arcade game played by Jeff Bridges, is trying to hack into the Encom's mainframe computer to find evidence that Encom's senior executive, Ed Dillinger, played by David Warner, has stole four video games he created of his own. But Dillinger's supercomputer, known as the Master Control Program, falls Flynn's efforts and dictates and controls most of the computer systems. So one night, Flynn's former girlfriend Lori and her boyfriend, Ace computer programmer Alan Brady, both of which are played by Cindy Morgan and Bruce Brox Lentner, helps Flynn breaks into Ancon to shut down the master control program with Alan's security program, Tron. But the master control program uses Laurie's Matters transmission program and converts Flynn into data and was zapped into a computer and sends uh, Flynn inside an electronic computer game that has a life and death experience which is also being ruled by the evil chief henchman Sark also played by David Warner but with the help of Tron and Yori they find a better solution to save the world and destroy the master control program from destroying the entire world and have Flynn's only way back from the computer into the real world. Now this is one classic film that you will never forget because not only is this film had great characters while the story at, at times could be a little weak but that's okay because I think the real importance of the film was the idea of hacking into a computer and all of a sudden go straight into the electronic program that you never thought you would see. And that's what made this movie so amazing because of the special effects um, and it was also the first film that actually used CGI and back then it was very impressive. It was a lot different than it is now because nowadays I think people will find it a lot cheesier than it looks but it had you know, very great, impressive animation from this time. I love the the scenes with the life cycles, you know, moving around into a maze. Uh, there were a lot of grids that they had uh, in those scenes. Those also the tanks and the controllers that they had. Um, it, it's it's definitely like a video game that you never thought you'd see in a movie because it's like you just once you're in there. You know you have to do whatever you can to to stop this. Because no matter how you do it, you know, you're going to be sucked into it. And, and the worst part is you, know, you might get killed over there. But that's how amazing this movie was made um, by Disney standards. Because this was back when Disney was was having some problems you know, with all their Disney releases at the time. While they were still releasing hand-drawn animation films. They, they were really struggling uh, to find another feature film that could save the company. But so far, you know, Disney's been getting better as years follow. And that's when they started getting all these animated films. But the film, of course, itself was ahead of its time. I really did enjoy the look of it and and the feel of what, what was it like to be inside a computer program. It totally blew you out of your mind. It's just amazing how a film like this could be made. And you know what? I really, really enjoy this movie a lot more than I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. Story-wise, I still think it's one of the best computer animated films ever made back in 1982. And Jerk Bridges, of course, is still one of the finest actors of all time in any generation. And I'm glad he's still you know, with us to do movies like this. So far, so good. And I thought David Warner was also you know, very good as the villain in this movie, as Zark. 
it's like somehow you've seen the same characters that you see outside of the real world, but when you're inside in the electronic world, they're playing different characters in their games. It's just, the movie was just breathtaking. And it's actually good to see uh, that Steven Lidsberger, who, who wrote and directed this movie, did an extensive job you know, working with the animation. Um, after his previous work with um, Animal Olympics and all his other commercial work that he was doing, I think this was definitely his, his true dream of making a movie like this. And so far with the latest sequel called Tron Legacy, at least it brought back its sequel to life. A lot different than it was with the 1982 original. It was ahead of its time, and I think it's definitely worth checking. So, I, I suggest you should watch Tron first, and then later see Tron Legacy to see for yourself. Because I had to say those two movies are amazing, and I really enjoyed it. Anyway, I give Tron, the 1982 original classic. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.